Good afternoon. Please uh, take your uh, seat. Uh, this is uh, a symposium sponsored by uh, Balton, a uh, Polish company. And uh, the title of the entire symposium is uh, Distal Left Main Stenosis, How to Treat Optimally with Dedicated Bifurcation Stent, uh, BIOS LIMSE Case-Based Session. And uh, Robert Gill is uh, going to describe the uh, session objective. Robert. Patrick, thank you very much for the presentation. So my, uh, this is my conflict, uh, potential conflict uh, of, 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 uh, of interest. Uh, so we know very well that how important for the coronary vasculature is left main. We know from anatomy studies uh, that uh, this uh, uh, part of uh, coronary vasculature is affected by atherosclerosis. Depending on the place, we can distinguish uh, ostium, shaft, and distal uh, position. Today we are, we'll be talking about distal one. We know that the incidence is up to 6%. Uh, very rarely it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, um, it's uh, only left main. In majority of cases, other vessels are also uh, um, affected. Here you can appreciate the percentage. How does it look like in the real, uh, real life uh, in, uh, among the people uh, undergoing uh, um, coronary an angiography? And of course, we have to remember that this is a very important uh, parameter or, or fact in terms of uh, outcome of, 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 of the patient. So therefore, this patient should be revascularized. Uh, doesn't matter in which way, surgically or percutaneously. Uh, left main is a, is, a, uh, is a bifurcation. However, it's a special uh, uh, bifurcation. We have to remember about the rule, the same as for other bifurcations. Uh, so with regular stent, we have to re remember that uh, we should uh, we should fulfill uh, and uh, all of the rec recommendations of European Bifurcation Club with the distal reference uh, for, uh, let's say, uh, sizing stands and optimization for proximal, uh, proximal part and, and uh, access to uh, uh, side branch. And of course, in the, in, this is uh, some, uh, somehow uh, the destroyment of, of, of the stand. Uh, anyway, we also know that there were so many studies showing that percutaneous a treatment is effective and good. However, the last two trials were not so very clear, uh, positive for Excel, rather ne negative for, for Nobu. Uh, we know that uh, some, uh, some uh, trials re regarding uh, the percutaneous approach, there are very uh, small number in terms of dedicated coronary, uh, dedicated bifurcation stents. Here you can appreciate four years result of left main sub subroof um, from uh, two randomized trials, Polbos 1 and Polbos 2. And then you can see that there was a kind of, of, of um, a favor in terms of this particular stand. That, that was an old one, stainless steel. Now we have chromium, uh, chromium cobalt, a 70 micrometer uh, strat thickness with the same biodegradable polymer, that's the same uh, concentration of, 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 of serimus. And then this is a, a, a first in men um, with this particular stand, clinical results uh, for provisional T stenting uh, uh, population. You can appreciate that the final results after one year was at least acceptable. Uh, in, in both groups, uh, uh, left main and non-left main. Taking into, into account that this stand, because of the design, gives us a, a very wide, uh, um, a very uh, wide potential treatment, uh, uh, taking into account two stands techniques, you can see here modified uh, MATS system, which was proposed, pr uh, prepared for Polbos left main study, which we started a couple of months ago so far, we enrolled even uh, more than 37 uh, uh, patients. And I hope that uh, part of the today presented cases are just from this uh, particular trial. So here you can appreciate session objectives to get acquainted with the new technology for bifurcation lesion, uh, to learn about multiple technological options with dedicated bifurcation stem for complex left main bifurcation lesions, and to learn about applicability of the dedicated bifurcation stand for the different clinical presentation. Of course, the main actor of today is BIOS uh, LIM, LIM, LIM C. Then, uh, of course, just to go to the next step, uh, 
Uh, let's start with, with the a clinical uh, case. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Robert. So we move to the, the first uh, case presentation by Jacek Legutko from uh, Poland. We'll talk about the provisional distancing with BIOS uh, LIMC, an, in an inherent pot-like approach because of the design of the stent. Uh, thank you, Thierry. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here and to present one of the cases uh, which I uh, included into the uh, Polbos study. Uh, stent implantation in the main vessel only, followed by provisional balloon angioplasty with or without stenting of the side range is recommended strategy for PCI bifurcation lesions, including left main. And this is the recommendation from uh, European Society of Cardiology, but also from European Bifurcation Club. And it was mentioned by uh, Robert that the strategies, if you use regular stents, uh, to uh, implant the stent uh, sized according to the distal main vessel diameter, uh, which has to be followed immediately by proximal optimization technique. The device which we are talking about today is a serially muzalutin cobalt chromium stand with uh, strut thickness of uh, 70 microns, uh, which has special design, which is, uh, which is uh, the pod light design. Uh, the balloon, uh, the, the stand, uh, uh, is, uh, <coughs> has two. Uh, uh, di two different uh, mm, uh, parts connected with two connectors and mounted on the balloon shape uh, balloon. So it is like a pot uh, like design of the stand. Uh, the additional advantage is the easy access uh, to the side range when the stand is appropriately positioned on the uh, bifurcation lesion, uh, including left main. My case is 50 years old, 57 years old uh, male with some typical factors for atherosclerosis, and he was admitted with uh, the angina class CCS3 uh, uh, for the last three months, uh, with a preserved ejection fraction, no significant uh, valvular diseases. Uh, the right coronary artery is pretty normal. However, on the, uh, left, main, uh, on the left coronary system, we, we see the significant disease uh, on the distal part of the left main. This is, by angiography, it looks like isolated left main. A disease with some extensive calcium. Uh, the routine practice in this trial is to check uh, the angiography uh, by the core lab with bifurcation dedicated uh, QCA software, which showed us uh, the significant uh, uh, confirmed significant narrowing on the distal left main uh, and uh, the Medina classification for this particular left main. Um, stenosis was 100, uh, so ideal patient for provisional uh, stenting strategy. Uh, we started this case with additional uh, physiology assessment, which is part of the scientific protocol. So we did an IFR, which was 0 0.78, uh, but we are uh, mostly interested also to do the co-registration uh, and IFR pullbacks. And in this case, you see uh, that the maximum pressure drop is exactly at the uh, uh, site of the distal left main narrowing, uh, so we have clear con uh, uh, confirmation of indication for intervention. Uh, because with this evaluation, patients started to, uh, to mm, uh, feel some chest pain. Before uh, I was, I did uh, small balloon predilatation with 2.5 balloon, and then I did uh, intravascular imaging, uh, doing pullbacks from both uh, LAD and CERD with high resolution IBUS probe. And uh, um, you can see the diameters or the, or the references which were assessed by the QCA uh, software and by IVUS. Of course, there are some uh, discrepancies and this also would be checked in the protocol. What is important uh, in this particular patient after predilatation, there is a calcium crack, but still the calcium burden is uh, quite large. So this is why I decided to go for additional uh, predilatation with non-compliant balloon 3.5. Uh, by 15 and uh, 16 atmospheres, and then uh, decided, based on the IVOS assessment of the references, uh, to implant bio, bio stand for uh, 25 uh, um, uh, per uh, 3.5 and 24 uh, millimeter long. What is very important for this technology, and this is the very easy technique, however, the crucial point is to appropriately position the stand in the mid marker should be positioned on top of the carina. Uh, 
it's not very easy in every case. You need to look for different projections and try to 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 uh, confirm this many times. Of course, that when there is a movement uh, forward and backward of the device, it's it's more difficult. Uh, however, uh, if you achieve uh, the appropriate position after implantation, you have clear access to the syringe, which is the real advantage of this device. I implanted the stand with 12 atmospheres, and uh, immediately after, I decided to uh, uh, perform additional pot according to the reference diameters. The maximum size uh, of the um, BIOS was not enough to achieve 5 volts, so I did 5 volts. Uh, balloon post dilatation with uh, 16 atmospheres and then I did a kissing due to some carina shift from a lady towards Cirque uh, it was necessary to use uh, kissing balloon inflations 3.5 in LED and 3.0 in circumflex and uh, usually uh, after uh, uh, kissing balloon inflations I finish uh, with a repot the same balloon 16 atmospheres and this is the final result. The procedure was straightforward, uh, without any problems. Uh, the probe is on the table, so I also checked the result in uh, intravascular ultrasound. I, I was satisfied, of course, distally. There was, um, the, the expansion of the stent was not the same as in the ostium. However, the minimum lumen cross-sectional area was much higher than uh, expected for optimal result of the PCI. In-hospital outcome was good, uh, without a significant uh, increase of uh, cardiac markers and patient was discharged home uh, two days later. So my take-home messages are that left main coronary artery disease is associated with a relatively large amount of myocardium at risk, therefore PCI for left main disease has been considered one of the challenging subsets. Stent implantation to the main vessel only, followed by provisional balloon angioplasty with or without stenting of the side branch, is recommended for PCI of bifurcation lesion, including left main bifurcation. The BIOSLIM uh, C serolim mozolutin cobalt chromium stent is a dedicated coronary bifurcation stent for provisional side branch stenting with strat thickness of 70 microns. And finally, the Paul Boss left main study will indicate the efficacy of BIOSLIM C stent with contemporary PCI for distal left main bifurcation lesions in comparison with the Zion stent from the recent Excel trial as a performance index. Thank you very much for your question. So that's great. We are on time. We have uh, three minutes of uh, discussion. Um, I would like to ask um, Jerry if uh, this inerrant uh, <laughs> pot-like uh, system is uh, embody your, your philosophy of uh, standing. Yeah, yeah I, I, <coughs> I fully agree with that. I think it's, it's very important. So. It's a way to simplify the procedure. Uh, I'm not completely sure that the, the pot with a 5-0 balloon would be necessary because you can increase the pressure with the balloon and do the automatic pot with the BIOS. I think it's, uh, it's very nice. But of course, it's not, uh, uh, it's not a bad, bad thing to do a final pot with a non-compliant balloon in order to, to be sure that the vessel is well open, understand, well opposed and well expanded. Um, I think also that the fact that there is no metal or very little metal at the level of the carina is also something very positive because we know that uh, uh, usually there is no plaque at the level of the carina, so we don't need a lot of metal at this level. So I think it could be a very positive thing also for the uh, mid and long term follow-up. So um, you didn't mention the dot which is the new term. I mean, I knew the pot, but now there is the Polish dot. So I would like to know how frequently the Polish dot is uh, necessary. You know, many years ago, we had a Swiss kiss. You remember yeah. that? Now we have the Polish dot. Can you tell us what is the frequency of that? How many times you have to make an optimization of the distal segment? So fo following the uh, uh, advices from Robert, who is, you know, he, he, he implanted the the highest numbers of stand, uh, so he's got experience. Uh, it's good to implant this stand with not do very high pressure, so it means that you need to post dilate with additional non-compliant balloons. And not only in proximal part, but it is also good to, uh, to uh, optimize the implantation in the uh, distal main vessel, so it means in bifurcation of the left main usually in LAD. So I did this, this was the part of the final kissing balloon inflations, yes. May I comment? 
Uh, theoretically, in at least 60% of cases, based on IVUS uh, uh, inspections, uh, the dot is, dot is necessary. Theoretically, you can avoid dot and pot if you oversize the stand. But also by, 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 by uh, IVUS uh, investigations, I would say uh, when you don't cover the, the whole uh, left main body, it's very, it's very uh, um, uh, likely that you will get uh, dissections if you oversize the stand primarily. So therefore, the suggestion is just to use not the uh, uh, already optimal uh, for the vessel size, rather a little bit less, with a latation with a dot with distal portion yeah. and and uh, a proximal proximal. Yeah, I, I think it's a uh, it's very good point. Uh, but the dot is part of the final kissing by inflation. Yeah. So, yes. it's, so when you do a final kiss, you do an inherent exactly. dot also yeah. at exactly. the same time. Yeah. So, uh, so I think it's, uh, it's very nice because it reinforce what we should do when we treat bifurcation lesions. Any question from the audience? We still have one minute. Maybe one additional, you, you mentioned the advantage of this uh, free space at the side of the Carina. What is also important is many years ago with Chris Girazis in the uh, syntax, we showed that the systolic, diastolic variation in angulation is very important. When you had uh, a culotte of something really fixing the two vessels, there were more maize in the syntax after five years. So I'm curious to see if these, uh, there is still a motion of the angulation. Yeah. That's also a good thing. I, I fully agree with you. So do you plan to do that on the, on the yeah, follow-up? Yeah, we, we will work Because on I that. think it will be very interesting <coughs> to see that they will have continuing movement of the, of the two branches of the bifurcation. Yes, so in this study that the, uh, in, uh, in uh, cardiolysis, uh, we have academic team to work on the, uh, all the angiography, and all the uh, um, cases were screened by the uh, dedicated bifurcation software. But uh, as a, one of the sub study, we try to do this uh, uh, three dimensional QCA, systolic, diastolic, to see this effect. Very good. Uh, we know that uh, calci uh, calcium in coronary arteries is a friend of, of, uh, uh, of interventionalists, so therefore we have uh, a case also for calcified lesions. Uh, first, first we have to thank... Uh, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> so I, in I invite Luke Mailat to present his case, synergy between rotablator and bioslim C for highly calcified left main bifurcation lesions. Thank you. Um, on est marqué. On est parti. C'est moi, moi qui ai la main. Escape, escape. escape. Click escape on the left. Okay, okay. Escape, and then Thank choose you. your presentation. Double click. OK. Synergy <coughs> between rotablation and bioslim. I have no conflict. So my colleagues are implicated in the strategy, the discussion we have uh, in, in uh, such complex cases. And directly, this is a young guy of 77 years old, many risk factors, and uh, no uh, past uh, cardiac history, but uh, he is currently with a renal failure and current dialysis. He has a colo uh, colorectal tumor that had been uh, drawn back, and also a prostatic tumor. That's a serious guy. He presented with a non STEMI MI with a, a positive troponin. Uh, the right uh, femoral approach uh, was chose to keep free uh, the two arms for dialysis. And we can see uh, this is a big right coronary artery with uh, some uh, ateroma, with no significant disease, but we can see also the small calcification on the proximal part. And on the left, before the injection, you can see a severe calcification. <laughs> Yeah. That's a good guy, yeah? good candidate for uh, such kind of presentation and discussion. Okay? Yeah. So uh, when you look carefully, um, all the distal left main is engaged and concerned. The proximal cirque uh, is uh, also infiltrated and there is a severe tight stenosis on the proximal uh, osteal LAD, a long diffuse infiltration of the LAD on, on the uh, long lesion. On, after that's okay, so it seems look uh, uh, something like 
50, 60 millimeter lengths uh, of disease. So the syntax score was uh, evaluated at uh, 26, and the, the, the file was discussed for, uh, for all the options we can propose to this guy. Severe uh, risk factor, complex lesion, what kind of strategy, and uh, because we won't have a lot of time, let's go directly to PTCA because surgeons say, no, I don't want to touch this guy. We discuss about the strategy, and this is quite important. This is a, a new tool, and uh, personally, I miss uh, free some information about the comportment. It's like a Canada dry, you know. It looks like a tubular stent with integrated port, but this is a new guy, completely different. We are uh, still working on bench, but uh, we don't have all the, the, the final uh, data, but we can open the discussion for later. So the strategy was we want first, if uh, we do something, to save the patient. And in this way, uh, we are going to make a provisional T stenting. Let's go to open left main, LAD, and uh, let's see how we can deal with the, with the circumflex. The second way uh, in our experience, the, to be competitive with surgery, uh, the only tool in, uh, we have today uh, with a good backup is a rotablation. So first, rotablation, femoral approach due to the renal dysfunction and the, the dialysis, and the bioslim. I rapidly I feel uh, comfortable with this device for, for many reasons and we will have the, the opportunity to do it. So six French was enough for uh, the deal on the, what we had in, in, in the mind. The, the burr is a 1.5, was stuck in the distal left main, uh, whatever the high speed were used. And finally, I succeeded to cross, and I decided to rotablate also the, the second lesion on, on the, the LAD to be comfortable to set the, the stand. So rapidly, the check uh, didn't show any perforation, so Let's go for the follow-up. Predilatation with a semi-compliant balloon, 3.0, 3.5, mini inflation, and take time to prepare the lesion. And most probably, this is one of the key of the success of this device. You have to prepare perfectly the lesion before you set the stand. That's very important. And uh, because the, the, the balloon itself, my feeling is the balloon is quite uh, compliant. And after 12 atmosphere, it's difficult. You have to change of tool. So after many inflation, you have this aspect, uh, still a lesion uh, persisting uh, on the LAD and a large amount of calcification. Uh, we can also discuss later about the size of the, of the burr. Can we improve the result before uh, stenting or uh, uh, after the preparation of the lesion? Finally, we choose an option for a long stent that uh, were difficult to completely open. You, you can see uh, the the, uh, the difficulty to, to open the stand, uh, Onyx 3.0, we can discuss about the choice of the, the platform also. Uh, completed with a second one uh, uh, in distality, and you can see it's difficult to open the, the, the stand. Multiple inflation with a bigger balloon than the deliver stand, that means 3.0 for the distal part, 3.5 for the proximal part, and take time to make another balloon. And um, finally, when the lesion was uh, quite uh, well prepared, the bioslim 3.5 uh, for uh, 25 uh, by, by um, 19. Um, I choose to put another wire, could be a, a part also of the discussion. In routine, I don't use it now with uh, this guy, maybe because uh, due to the amount of the calcification, because maybe that was the beginning of the, the experience. Finally, uh, this is the aspect uh, after the delivery of the stent at 12 atmosphere. And I wait five minutes with nitro, and the easiness of the ostium of circumflex was uh, still uh, persisting following the optimization. I like to do this. I take the same balloon. And the same wire, pull back, following the pot, the access is really easy. And I use the same device to make the, the side, if we can start the, the side. And uh, to go back after for report or equivalent of dot or polish dot, I don't know how you say an hour. 
So finally, this is uh, the aspect after the optimization of the, the stand. Not very bad. A short overlap uh, on the LED and the, the, the lesion of the circumflex was still persistent after five minutes on nitroglycerin. So I decided to, to set another, uh, another stand. This is the uh, same family, Onyx 3.012 with the equivalent of TAP to prevent some complications or to quite to make it fast. So the stent is delivered, the balloon uh, is uh, set in the opposite on the left main on proximal LED, and finally the two balloons are used to make the kiss and you have the angiographic uh, final result. Um, I was curious, take time to make uh, OCT. The artery is already uh, well uh, uh, damaged. Uh, you don't have the, uh, the, the final analysis, but there is less than 2% of the struts that are not well opposed, whatever the, the crash, uh, we can say, of this uh, disaster uh, artery. And what is important and interesting is when you are going to arrive in the, in, in the stand to look at it, you can see there is some dissection that, that, can, uh, that are uh, Tackle uh, by, by the, the stand. We are just arriving at the bifurcation. And we're going to see this posterior LED. Hop! The circumflex. Okay, so it's not bad. Good access. So, just few items for the discussion to open it for you. Uh, what kind of strategy for such kind of uh, very severe lesion on the, the multi. Um, uh, pathology associated for, for the patient? The place of rotablation for calcified uh, distal left main, the size of the burr, is there anywhere to is there um, an, is there any way to, to make it differently atherectomy, the size of the stent, uh, do we need to report with the tool? But uh, this is another story maybe. When do we need to kiss, and uh, do we need to optimize after the OCT you have seen? Thank you for your attention. So I'm sure that there is uh, plenty of questions, uh, the gentleman there, and then uh, you have to make a comment. Please, do we have a, a microphone, or do you want to use a microphone of the uh, le lecture? Thank you for such a nice presentation. I'd like to ask you, how do you measure the uh, left main length for optimization of your stent size? I mean that I saw that you just left the proximal part of stent between the left main ostium and the, and the uh, distal part. Yes. So how do you cover all the lengths? Usually I use the tip of the wire, BMV is 30 millimeter. Okay, so you know if you have half, you have 15. And your question is very interesting. We had uh, this part of discussion with Thierry uh, many times. Most probably, that's the way we develop the, the pot technique uh, when we discuss with uh, Gérard Finet. When you, you perform a pot, you increase the size, like a pair of glasses, on the proximal part of the, uh, the stand and in front of the stand. So some kind of guys develop the snuggle techniques, you know, short balloon to perform the kissing, not to be sure to be outside of the stand. So when you are outside of the stand, you make another stretch. So that was the way Thierry and other French guys proposed to cover Evovar, especially if I remember well, to, to treat with the tubular stent from the ostia to the distal part to prevent rust stenosis and dissection at the ostial part of the left main or just in front of the stent. This is the story, the story of the, the, the technique of tips and tricks of the bifurcation. So with this stent, if you don't perform a kiss or if you make a light kiss, if you don't want to increase too much or if you close your procedure with a final put, 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 I don't know how to say it, but you, you prevent this um, abnormal deformation and you prevent the dissection in f at the beginning of the stand. So you don't need to have ostia to distal uh, left main coverage with the stand. This is one of the advantages of this device. There is many advantages we can discuss, but there is many tips and tricks. So, so that's really interesting. Yeah, please. Just a comment. The length of the lesion is not the length of the stent. Because the proximal uh, part and the distal part of the BIOS, 
it's not, not the same length. For example, in a 19 centimeter, the proximal part is only nine. So you, the, the, the positioning of the stent is imposed by the carina. And sometimes it's hard to s select the, the correct length because the proximal part or the distal part are not the same. Okay, may I, may I, may I comment f just to answer the, 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 your question? First of all, uh, we s really strongly recommend uh, IBUS assessment. Based on that, you can avoid um, uh, uh, coverage of, of the proximal part of the, of the, of the left main. Then uh, all these three, uh, let's say, length, 16, 19, and 24 fits for, let's say, majority of cases. In other situations, you have to add uh, thin strut stents to, to, to prolong the stent. This is the, the, the one issue. It's not necessary to cover for everyone uh, from, from the ostium of, of, of left main. The other question regarding uh, calcium, I, I would like to, to stress, we have to, very, very, to be very cautious. If we see the continuity of calcium from, uh, from uh, LAD to, to left main, the lesion has to be very properly prepared. So with uh, rotablation, we are dealing only with superficial part of the, of, of the calcium. Strongly believe that new technology, this uh, lithotripsy, percutaneous lithotripsy, will so would solve this particular case because mm. I'm afraid that you didn't achieve a proper minimal lumen cross section area that was less than 8.5 uh, uh, square millimeters. So I would suggest to enlarge the, the bar <coughs> or to use uh, lithotripsy, percutaneous lithotripsy, or litho, li, li, to, to, to perform litho, li, uh, lithoplasty, just to, uh, to, 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 to give the good expansion of the stand. Because the mid portion of the stand is not so strong radially like the rest. So in the calcification, we have to prepare the lesion. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, I, I think it's a very important point because, uh, uh, of course, everybody has not the possibility to use lithoplasty in the coronary arteries. It's very... Uh, Expensive also. Confidential at this time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you can do it, but it's very expensive. Um, and I think that many people are using rotablator with a small, two yeah, small yeah, burrs. Yes. And in this case, <coughs> the reference diameter is 3.5. So uh, 1.5 is less than 0.6. So the, the, the mm. magic number for yeah, rotablation no. is 0.6. And I think we should follow this magic number except if you use lithoplasty after rotablator. Because we can see clearly uh, by OCT at the end, uh, you correct me if I'm wrong, but the ostial LED, the stand is not fully yeah. expanded. Yeah. It's, uh, we have an oval shape of the vessel, so it means that it's not expanded. So if you use a, a 1.75 burr, you will have better expansion of the stand, better deployment, etc. So, uh, so I think we should be careful with uh, Rotablation does not mean that you will have good expansion if the burr is too small. So we don't, we don't have the answer yet. Huh? That's clear for me. Rotablation is just to avoid stalactite and stalagmite to be sure to cross with the tools. But the final expansion uh, and shockwave is, a, is an option, but good preparation with non compliant band, that's clear. We, we don't have the perfect tool to make it. Maybe a atherectomy will be a, a good candidate, but to, to do it in routine, to make such kind of complex cases, fast, safe, and easy. So we, we don't have the full answer, that's clear. But that's, this tool is very interesting to help us to make something uh, simple. Thank you very much, uh, Luc. It was very good. So I think, I think that discussion was uh, very, very useful because uh, all the nitty gritty detail uh, are coming. I'll ask Thierry to introduce uh, yeah, Dr. Vasiliev, uh, Dobrin Vasiliev uh, uh, from Bulgaria, who will uh, describe the culotte technique with the bi BIOS stent. So, <coughs> dear chairmen, uh, dear colleagues, thank you for the invitation from Bolton uh, to giving this uh, presentation. Uh, culotte technique, uh, in general, uh, at the moment, what uh, we know about uh, the kilot that uh, it's feasible with uh, good intermediate results, uh, as uh, any double stenting technique gives more pre procedural minor crosses. 
depending on the study, there is uh, more or less restenosis. Most of the studies, there is less restenosis uh, in the groups with uh, culotte when compared with another uh, double stenting uh, techniques. And uh, the clinical results uh, in mint at uh, long term are practically equal with uh, another uh, two stent uh, techniques. Why BIOS for culotte stenting? It permits uh, to cover the large extension distance. This is the lateral to lateral main branch to side branch uh, wall distance at the carina tip, which is very difficult to achieve such a, a huge expansion of the regular stand struts. Uh, it permits a large angular deformation. Practically, you can kink the stand on 90 degrees and expand the stand, and uh, this is uh, not a problem. And because of the above two points, uh, it saves uh, the fluoroscopy time, contrast, and uh, shortens the procedure. This is what usually happens when you perform a culotte with regular stents. And uh, if there is a big mismatch between the size of the side branch and main branch, there is a possibility not to cover well uh, the carina. Uh, and, uh, It's, this is the same situation with the large angulation between branches. With uh, BIOS, uh, this limitation is overcome, so you can use BIOS for the uh, when the, there is a mismatch between the large mismatch between the sizes of the side branch and uh, main branch, and uh, in larger angulation in general, there is a recommendation not to do culotte if the uh, angulation is more than 70 degrees. Uh, we reported the first uh, case with uh, Culot uh, in uh, left main uh, in 2016. It is curious that one month later Peter Stella reported uh, a Culot stenting in the LED after us. So I will uh, show you one case with the left main and uh, Culot stenting. This uh, male patient, uh, young patient, 49 year old with unstable angina, with uh, typical risk factors for uh, our patient and uh, syntax score of uh, 24. The patient had a high grade stenosis at the ostia of the LED and uh, circumflex, moderate lesion in the distal left main and uh, high-grade uh, Medina 111 uh, stenosis in the mid-LED. The right coronary artery was uh, relatively normal and dominant. So after placement of the wire and uh, trying to predilate the left main, practically balloon was uh, very difficult to push. So I switched to rotablator and uh, And we made a rotablation with 1.5 uh, burr. Uh, from our previous experience, we know very well that uh, any obstacle to implant the BIOS, uh, to uh, place the BIOS inside the vessel could lead to very dramatic complications. So this is why those such a situation, I switched very fast to rotablation. Then uh, there was a predilation with the small balloon uh, and uh, stenting of uh, the mid LED with uh, dragiloting stent uh, 30228. And after kissing, this is the result. And then uh, we switched to left main. The left main uh, was uh, predilated with the large balloon. This is a balloon 35. One might remark regarding even for the previous case is that uh, what we do at the moment is to do uh, predilatation with a non-compliant balloon, one-to-one -one sized according to the distal vessel. We inflate this balloon up to um, when we, the, it looks satisfactory on the angio. Then uh, we implanted uh, the first BIOS to the uh, circumflex artery. It was uh, 3.5 to 3 to 18 atmospheres. After the first implantation, there was a distal dissection. So after a pot of the stent, we implanted uh, distally additional stent to seal the dissection. And then a second BIOS was implanted uh, in direction to the LED. 
there was a, a sequential uh, balloon inflation and kissing and uh, final pot with uh, five hole balloon and uh, this is uh, the final result uh, for this patient. So, uh, in conclusion, I can say that culotte stenting with two BIOS limb stents uh, is feasible, it's easy to do and uh, safe. The preparation of the lesion is of utmost uh, importance. Uh, if there is any problem with the predilatation, just uh, my advice is to go to the rot ablation and, or even from the beginning. And uh, in general, for the culotte with uh, BIOS, we have uh, around 30 cases done with uh, BIOS. It's good to select the patients with uh, large side branches with a size more than 2.5. Thank you. Thank you. Any question from the audience? Don't be shy. If there is something that you did not understand, you go to the microphone and voice your question. Is the angulation of the left main and the rest other cells? Is, the, is there any limitation for biosystem? I mean, this for the uh, connection connectors. Uh, for me, no. We just uh, I have. Uh, to be honest, with uh, BIOS only, we have uh, maybe five or six cases, with two BIOS cases. But uh, I have uh, quite a good number with the uh, culotte stenting using BIOS for the side branch and uh, regular stent for the main branch. This is some kind of hybrid uh, culotte stenting. And uh, in general, I use BIOS exactly for this reason, because of the angulation. And uh, because you can choose with BIOS the proper size, and not to afraid of this small opposing proximally uh, when you use the regular stand. Because if you have a 2.5 side branch with 3.5 uh, proximal size or 4.0 uh, proximal size of the bifurcation, it is very difficult to, to expand in reality this state in proximal section. So your question probably was uh, associated with the uh, with the uh, danger of of, of decreasing the, decreasing the the, the, the lumen uh, in the orifice of, of of side branch. So my suggestion is rather to avoid 90 degrees. Much better, it's up to 70. It, it it's safe. And the second very important issue is a good preparation of the ostium. So if you see that this is a very calcific, uh, fibrotic uh, lesion, should be properly uh, uh, prepared. Without this, as uh, Dobrin said, uh, that, 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 that will be only the, only, only the problem. I have one question, excuse me. I didn't uh, realize, were the two stands uh, identical diameter or were Yes, in this, in this case there was a But you believe, identical. can we utilize different diameter or in yes, the you can, you, Even you, you can use any combination. You have just to keep in mind uh, yeah. about the <coughs> proximal section, what is the maximum diameter which you can achieve after with the post dilatation after that, after stenting, I mean just to have a good overlap and uh, so proposal. If, uh, so you suggest to utilize the smaller one at the beginning and the larger? I it mean, depends on the, on, depends only from the angulation. The angulation, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. for me. This, this yeah. is the... This is very important to, 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 to know that you can enlarge the, 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 at least for one millimeter uh, both parts of, of, of bio stand. It was... Uh, Confirmed by, uh, by, by Dr. Finet, it, it, it is published right now. Uh, even you can proceed to 1.5 uh, millimeters. So this, uh, this, uh, 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 how do I say? Re let's say the, the differences between sizes you can uh, uh, add, uh, up to optimize with the with the pot. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Dobrin, for your okay. presentation. <laughs> now. Now we came to the last one, which is a different one. Uh, it will uh, teach us how that sometimes operator makes a mistake. So, uh, Tomasz Pawłowski from, from, from Poland. Rescue bioslim C in distal left main occlusion in patient with STEMI. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, dear colleagues, uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, please note that uh, the title of the presentation is a little bit uh, different uh, than in the last recently published uh, program, but it's uh, done just to better a description of the case. So uh, this is uh, my disclosure, and uh, I would like to share with you the case uh, that uh, not everything was uh, perfect. So this is the case, uh, the uh, elderly uh, man with diabetes hypertension, uh, he was uh, treated uh, in our department in September uh, last uh, year. Uh, we know that uh, he has a um, depressed ejection fraction, we don't know why, but uh, uh, completely uh, was revascularized by uh, PCI in LAD in, in circumflex. Of course, due to uh, low ejection fraction, uh, ICD uh, was implanted uh, as well. So, um, at this moment, uh, mm, we had the patient uh, after, uh, it was after three months uh, later, in December uh, 2018, chest pain for four hours, uh, dyspnea, and some signs of cardiogenic uh, shock <coughs> with uh, his uh, ACG. Uh, only 20% of ejection fraction with uh, some uh, echinesis of um, in, uh, inferior septum and anterior war. Of course, uh, what the guidelines said, uh, we know that uh, emergency PCI uh, of the carpet lesion is indicated for uh, every, every case uh, with cardiogenic chest, uh, cardiogenic shock uh, due to STEMI or uh, even other uh, uh, acute coronary uh, syndrome. Uh, of course, we uh, should uh, remember that uh, the, our our job uh, should be done uh, as far as uh, fast as uh, possible. So this is the initial angiography of this of this case. Uh, some um, uh, occlusion in the right coronary artery. The time is uh, unknown, and the uh, left coronary system is very uh, diseased, uh, and uh, the clue of the program is uh, this image of the uh, um, equivalent of left main uh, in uh, proximal and well, proximal of LAD and circumflex. So the operator uh, was faced to the decision what should be the um, technique for the, um, uh, for the stenting, of course, uh, not uh, um, surgery option was, uh, was not taken uh, in the account. So, uh, of course, uh, the simplest uh, with the provisional stenting uh, is the first uh, double stent uh, technique, uh, decay crush or culotte of, uh, of course, uh, false stenting is also an option not mentioned here, and also uh, the dedicated bifurcation stent. And, of course, as you can assume, uh, the dedicated bifurcation stent is, uh, is, uh, was choose uh, for this, uh, for this uh, case. And please note the, uh, the let's say, easy and time uh, for uh, bifurcation bias uh, stand and uh, other techniques uh, for procedural uh, times and uh, fluoroscopy time, times uh, for, for different techniques uh, in uh, distal left main uh, stenting. So uh, in our experience and experience of uh, um, Dr. Briguri, the time of uh, bias uh, implantation is uh, lower than uh, other two stents uh, techniques. So uh, the decision, of course, was uh, just going for the uh, dedicated bifurcation stent. Uh, the operating uh, decision was, uh, uh, let's say, a small um, size of the bias limb. Uh, after predilatation, uh, he was looking for the optimal position uh, for, for the stent and uh, a few uh, projections just to look uh, for the optimal position. Uh, and uh, the last on the, uh, on the left side uh, was and it was uh, implanted. Of course, uh, at this moment you can observe that uh, there is something, uh, something wrong with the position, position and I will uh, show you in, in, uh, in the detail later. But uh, after, after, uh, after implantation this was the result and uh, of course the patient was uh, still uh, in cardiogenic shock. 
So uh, in tap uh, in tap technique, uh, the uh, circumflex was um, uh, treated uh, with uh, final final kissing, and this is the the final result for this for this part of this uh, procedure. So of course the patient was uh, was better and better. Uh, after seven days, he was discharged with 22% uh, of uh, ejection fraction. Uh, we planned for him another another uh, angioplasty with meat uh, LAD and circumflex. And we uh, recently admitted him uh, um, uh, last month, uh, still 20% of the, uh, ejection fraction, CCS free and NIHA uh, free. So, uh, Follow-up angio, angio was like this, uh, almost very similar to uh, to the previous one from the December. The same stenosis in the uh, both uh, proximal parts of the left marina, uh, left coronary artery. So what were, what went wrong uh, in the previous procedure? The stent was placed too far. Of course, it was uh, dedicated with the um, clinical status of the patient, and the gap stent was placed uh, beyond uh, carina. Of course, uh, you can see it very well. So the distal part of the stent was also uh, unexpanded, so we can observe it very clearly. And as uh, previously Professor Seroys uh, said, uh, we developed uh, the dot uh, technique. Polish dot. <laughs> Excuse me, Polish dot, Polish, Polish dot uh, technique, uh, and now uh, for the most cases uh, we recommend and we do in our lab uh, this uh, this uh, procedure. So in this case, this dot was not performed. So just for your visualization, uh, that was uh, the problem with the uh, with the stand. The uh, black should be the red. Uh, it was uh, how what it was deployed. Of course, the carina, carina was not uh, covered perfectly uh, with the gap. So uh, follow up angio and I was uh, imagining um, before a second uh, angiography showing us uh, what is the problem. The necessity of uh, dot is uh, well seen uh, at this moment. Circumflex going on the uh, four o'clock. And now we have left uh, left main. So uh, in the detail, uh, some in still frames we have um, uh, something like this. Some uh, images corresponding to the structure of the uh, of the bios. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, the story the story uh, was continued. Uh, we decide uh, to do another another PCI after hard team discussion. Uh, now, uh, now it was uh, supported with IVAC device. Uh, uh, of course, we decide to cover uh, all the length of the proximal AD and the left uh, main with the resolute onyx stent. Uh, and the procedure, briefly, I show you uh, how it was uh, done, kissing predilatation uh, and stent um, onyx implantation across, uh, across left main. Uh, some uh, dot and pot uh, pot um, inflations, and the results of the uh, of this uh, post dilatation. Of course, there are some dissection in the distal part of this uh, of this uh, second stent. So, another onyx place distally to in uh, in LAD, and finally we achieve a good uh, angiographic angiographic result toward uh, LAT, of course, some, let's say, um, compression of osteum uh, circumflex can be uh, observed. So my take-home message, message is just uh, bias limb C is an option in case of left main equivalent uh, stenosis with Medina uh, 011. And uh, what should we stress that uh, easy access to side branch may facilitate uh, two stand technique if it uh, needed. And uh, I think that uh, precise positioning uh, is needed in all cases, but it is very valuable option for uh, stenting in even in emergency situations, uh, avoiding uh, side, brand, side branch occlusion. Thank you very much. Great. So it's always very courageous to show that uh, we have made a mistake, yeah? Yes. And, but we learn from our mistake, fortunately. Yeah.
Any comment, any question from the audience? I have uh, one, uh, one question. Do you believe that uh, <clears throat> positioning the radio peak part of the guide wire in the side branch at the ostium uh, may help uh, to position uh, in the right way the stents? Uh, let's say that uh, our thought that um, <coughs> with BIOS was just to have a device to position it with one uh, um, uh, only one uh, guide wire. Uh, of course, uh, in some cases, uh, it's not so easy just to position with additional guide wire, uh, especially it is uh, very difficult in trifurcation uh, lesion. Uh, but of course, uh, I'm not so brave to, especially in this case, to, 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 to left uh, behind uh, the, the circumflex or other big uh, side branch uh, without any guide wire. Uh, of course, uh, as, at, as, what, uh, uh, as uh, it was uh, said uh, previously, uh, very precise uh, with different projections, uh, uh, sometimes not only two orthogonal projections, um, position of the stand is, uh, is needed. And uh, in the most cases, this is the, on, the most complicated uh, part of the procedure. Just to uh, have uh, the proper uh, image before, um, before procedure, then position in one, two, three, maybe. Uh, sometimes it is very easy just to have, uh, let's say, simple stand positioning one or two shot. Uh, for bias, sometimes uh, I do three, four angel projection, just looking for the, the best position of the mid marker uh, in the carina. Guide wire, sometimes, of course, I agree, may, be, be, may complicate the, 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 the positioning. Of course, uh, the movement of the stand is also, um, let's say, more... Um, more brief, more. Uh, I okay, uh, we are running. We have a running time uh, just to, to to implement the the the, the advi advices for uh, good positioning. Just avoid the position of the, of the, the stand within the guide uh, catheter. That was that was that was a case, because even small movement of of the guide changes the position of the stand. So it, it's, it, it's necessary to have at least a, a part of wire before, before the a guide ostium. So th we should avoid it. Uh, just to justify the operator, the, 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 the patient was very close to cardiogenic shock. Mm -hmm. he, has, he had no time to play, and so he just tried to be, to be good. Uh, not ideal. Thank you very much, Tomek. Yeah. So we have to the conclusions regarding this, uh, this session. Professor Seroys will, uh, let's say, will give us a take home message. Yeah, there's a tradition in uh, Euro PCR, so <coughs> I will uh, obey to the tradition. Yeah, and I put some slide to summarize what we have uh, learned today. So the number one, um, that was Yasek, he said very clearly, the bio stand has a bottle-shaped delivery balloon. This balloon ensures a pot-like effect after stand implantation. That's a, a very clear a message from uh, Yasek. <coughs> the next was, even in a severely calcified left main bifurcation lesion requiring rotablator, the bio stand demonstrates sufficient radial force to avoid acute recoil. That was uh, Luc uh, Maillard. Culot stenting with two bio stent is feasible, easy to do, and safe. This approach can minimize amount of metal at the carina and may result in less flow disturbance and better endotherization. That was the green. 
And finally, the bio stent is a valuable option for left main stenting in patients with ACS, although precise positioning is required. That was uh, Thomas. So um, I've been convinced that this technology is uh, valuable. So we have uh, this uh, trial to get with uh, Robert and uh, Thierry Lefebvre. It's about 260 patients. Uh, it is assessed and accepted by the local heart team, less than 33. It's confirmed by in and exclusion uh, criteria. There is a nice uh, circulation of the uh, cinefilm of the document between the call up and the uh, operator. Uh, the IVUS is absolutely essential to optimize uh, the treatment. It is a patient oriented composite endpoint uh, at 12 months. And uh, uh, as you could see, the call up is working very well. It's a kind of telemedicine. As soon as the film is done, is uh, sent to the call up. And uh, these uh, two gentlemen, senior interventional cardiologists with a lot of experience with uh, main stem, are analyzing all these main stem. So far, there are 38 patients. And as you have seen, uh, I think in the first presentation, you have the uh, FINE calculation, you have the reference diameter of the main stem, and you have the uh, diameter stenosis. This is what you have seen in one case. It is sent uh, within 10 minutes back to the operator with this information and the fact that it is eligible, that it is a Medina 100, that it is in fact a 66% diameter stenosis, and that the reference diameter calculated with the Finet equation is 433. So we are very pleased about that. Uh, additional things that we will do with the investigator is that uh, we have implemented some uh, sub-study this is the example of the QFR in the main stem. Of course, there are issues, like in every bifurcation, it's very difficult. So we have been uh, working on a super QFR, a QFR which is uh, segmented. It's work in progress, but uh, at the end of the game, at the end of the trial, we will be able to have this QFR for a bifurcated main stem with a formula that I don't have the time to explain right now, but will facilitate our work. So the Paul Boss trial has just started. I mean, it's nice to put a face on the investigate. I think uh, Robert Gill is our champion with 15. Maciek tell me yesterday that uh, he will come on board very quickly. Jacek uh, is the number two in uh, Poland with four. We have uh, Prof. Adam Witowski with two, and we are working for we are sec. Uh The rest in uh, Poland is coming. I think it is interesting. It's a Polish technology, so the national pride should work at a certain point, and I count on it. I mean, we have the La France en marche here. Uh, that is apparently the young people move faster than the old one, but uh, certainly Thierry Lefebvre and uh, Gilles have promised to come aboard uh, as well as Luc Maillard. And then we have a, a real champion here. I don't know what to do to slow down that guy. Uh, it's uh, Carlo Grigori. You know, the other day uh, a, fi a film came and, and the Japanese fellow was really embarrassed. I mean, he said, you know, uh, Professor, it's 49%. It's it could not be eligible. So I called Carlo. I said, fortunately, we cannot do it. One hour later, I had another one with 75%, uh, <laughs> so it works quite well. I'm sure that uh, Corrado and uh, Marco Contarini are going to get in board. And I think that uh, with the tempo that we have, maybe we will have uh, LBT at Euro PCR uh, 2020. Thank you very much. Thank you.